Hi, it's Grant Evans speaking here. I'm from Abbott and Morley Lawyers, and I'm just going to take you through the guide of testamentary trusts. For those of you who are not aware of testamentary trusts, they're extremely effective tools to shield future generations from uh, issues around family law, family provisions claims, uh, and the likewise. Um, they're really important in terms of litigation against trustee and bankruptcy. So when we set up these trusts um, on our death, and they can be through three various sources, from life insurance, you can have a life insurance testamentary trust. From superannuation, you can actually pay your superannuation directly into a testamentary trust. Alternatively, you can create a testamentary trust in your will. The difference between the three is that the life insurance testamentary trust and also the superannuation testamentary trust, whether it's an industry, retail or SMSF superannuation fund, all sit outside your estate, which means it's a lot quicker to receive funds, for funds to be placed in there, and it's not going to be subject to a potential family provisions claim where one of your children, grandchildren, ex-partners, other parties may seek to make a claim on your estate. So they're perfect in that regard. Remember, that's the insurance and also the superannuation. But the most famous ones are obviously the ones that are created from a will. So if there's no real issues around a potential claimant on your estate or the estate being embroiled in litigation, then this is for you. It's worthwhile sitting down and reading the testamentary trust guide as best as possible. And that way you're going to have a really good understanding of what's going on. Have a good look through the guide to testamentary trusts. As I noted before, a testamentary trust is commonly used by the state planning lawyers to protect the assets and inheritance of the testator's beneficiaries from creditors. Family law actions at the same time provide flexibility in relation to the distribution of the estate. In essence, a testamentary trust or multiple testamentary trusts, if you have a number of children, is a trust that arises from the estate of the deceased and its terms are contained in the will. There are other testamentary trusts that may arise on the death of a member of a, of a superannuation fund in relation to the death of a person with a life insurance policy. Now, if you have super or life insurance policy, please let your advisor know so that we can determine what the best solution is. So let's have a look at what it looks like in practice. So it sort of gives you a bit of an understanding of what it is and what's going on. I might just expand it a little bit so you can have a better read of it. Let's look at John Smith, who's a widower with a daughter, Sarah, who is an accountant and a son, Jacob, who's been in and out of rehab on a number of occasions. So you can tell me straight away, I'm sure you could probably tell me, and the same thing is that obviously we've got to be careful about Jacob. John wants to split his estate worth a million dollars into two. He has chosen Sarah as the executive of his estate. That's the person managing the distribution of the estate in accordance with John's will. And John's will enables Sarah to take her share of his estate and apply it as she desires because she's smart. You know, she knows what to do, probably use it to pay off the mortgage or pay for uh, kids' school fees, etc. However, for Jacob, John wants to place Jacob's share into a TT with the following terms and conditions. John's obviously concerned that if he gave half a million dollars to Jacob, that it may well go um, to nefarious um, clauses. So the basic guide there is these are the terms and conditions. And we want you to keep this in mind when we're going through later um, and you're looking at a position of uh, building these uh, testamentary trusts for perhaps your children um, or alternatively your spouse. So we've got Sarah in this instance is going to act as a trustee of the Jacob testamentary trust. Obviously, we don't want Jacob to go there because Jacob just can't be trusted. Sarah is to be the appointor of the Jacob TT. Um, the appointor is all important. If you've never had a trust before, really it's absolutely crucial to not only have your first appointor, but a successor appointor just in case Sarah um, is to have a issue or she's no longer able to act as the appointor. So Sarah is the trustee and is to invest the money to the Jacob TT for the benefit of Jacob and Jacob's bloodline. 
So again, we want to make sure that when we build these testamentary trusts, that they are for bloodline only. They're not to be dissipated later on outside the bloodline. Uh, as I said before, beneficiaries of Jacob TT are Jacob his bloodline, but do not extend to his latest de facto, which is important for the parents. Sarah is trying to distribute income to Jacob with no capital drawdowns or distributions unless to pay for medical or rehab expenses, quite often put in place in testamentary trusts. Jacob is to receive income only after a drug test, which if he fails, the income is to be set aside. If Jacob passes away, the TT is to continue for the benefit of his bloodline, and if none are living, for the benefit of Sarah. The terms and conditions of the trust, including the point or income and capital beneficiaries trustee and so on, are to be designated in the will of the deceased. Later on, we'll look at some of the key terms and conditions provide a data capture that enables the creation of a testamentary trust. So I've given you a good base there, so make sure you have a really good read of this guide to testamentary trust. We've got the benefits, the disadvantages, um, questions and answers such as does the TT start as I complete my will? Who should be the appointor? Now, does this override early wills I've done? What if I've got a young family? How many trustees can I have? Superannuation insurances. So all the answers are there. So have a read of that. Have a look at that case study we talked about and then start to apply it for your own data capture. And data capture is just simply an interview form that will go through that process for us. So have a read of this. And what I want you to do is simply put in your name, your age and your address, and then all the people who may be related to you, for example, your spouse. Um, so it might be Mary, spouse, address. If it's the same address, just say same address. Then your children and then also your grandchildren as well. That'd be fantastic. And then who's to be your executor? Now, the person who's going to be your executor um, is effectively the person who's going to manage your estate in the event of death. Now, if there's a challenge to the will, they need to be a very strong person. Of course, your advisor and your lawyers will be there to help them, but you want to make sure that they're not going to be subject to really vexatious or troublesome claims. They need to be able to stand up. So who is the name of the executor? Is it one of your children? Is it your spouse? Is it a friend? Is it an accountant? Is it a lawyer? Now, put their name down there, just in this little area here. And likewise, in the event that none of your executors, and you can have more than one if you want, are able to fulfil their duties because of sickness, incapacity, or death, who's the next one? So again, we need to plan for the worst. Then if there's not that successor, who's the second successor? And again, this, this follows down. And this is important when we look at testamentary trusts. Remember, the appointor is the person who's the ability to hire and fire the trustee. who's really got all the control. So we're going to make sure that we've got a line of succession of appointors. And quite generally, that may well follow the, the line of succession of executors, the people who are going to manage the estate. So here we've got, a like an, again, an example of how to complete the interview. And you'll see there I've done Max Smith and so on and so forth. So have a look at that. And we've got terms and conditions down here as well. Terms and conditions for beneficiaries. So what I want you to do there is pick out when you're going through, if there's a testamentary trust you want, put in, for example, it might be Max Smith, your son's testamentary trust, or the Smith children testamentary trust. Who's the first appointed? Who's the second? And are there any terms and conditions for beneficiaries or additional terms and conditions? Now, that's one testamentary trust. There may be others that you might want to set up. You might have three or four. So, again, just complete those at that stage. So once you've built your testamentary trust, they're essentially off and running. Now, before we get to the testamentary trust, we need to make in our will specific gifts. So, for example, you might be giving $100,000 to a person, or you might be giving a house in Collingwood to a person, or you might, for example, um, give your jewellery to a child or a grandchild. So this is where we go through specific gifts. So it's sort of the broad parameters around the trust, but we're not at that trust situation yet. 
we'll be calling on that a little bit later on. So for example, in here, we might have a gift of $500,000 and that's to go into the Max Smith Testamentary Trust. Does that make sense? So if we want a specific gift, or it could be my family farm at Condamine in New South Wales, and that's to go into June Smith Testamentary Trust. Remember, you've already put the terms and conditions of the Testamentary Trust up earlier. Now, once we've done all our gifts and we've paid all the administration expenses, funerals, et cetera, the next element there is what's gonna happen with the remaining estate. Are you just going to give it to one person? Is it going to be split equally amongst others? And do you want it to go into the estate? So if we have a look here, the name of the person. So again, if we have a look at the name of the person, it could be the main beneficiary, what percentage of the estate. So it could be, for example, Sally Smith, my spouse, 100% of my estate. Now, if she's not alive, then who's going to get the benefits? So is it going to be her bloodline children to be held in a testamentary trust? Or if she's not alive, is it any surviving main beneficiaries? But if she's got 100%, then obviously there's no other surviving primary beneficiaries or main beneficiaries. Alternatively, we can pay it down to our secondary beneficiary. And that might be, for example, our children. So then it jumps the thing and we're going to go to secondary beneficiary shortly or to be paid to any bloodline beneficiary at the executor's discretion. And likewise, we do the same with the secondary beneficiary. So who are those persons? Is it going to be you know, Joni Smith, the daughter with percentage of the estate? And if they're not alive, who is it going to be paid to? What are those ones? Now, you can also, um, although, again, remember, we can challenge estates, but if we've got some reasons, the court will look at reasons that if you don't want to keep little Johnny because he's been looked after all his life, and put his name in there and then the reasons why. Put down your funeral wishes. Do you want to be cremated? Do you want to be buried? Do you want to be thrown off, you know, the wharf somewhere? Or do you want to be buried and, you know, on the, the, the top, the furthest uh, northernmost point of Australia? Just put that in there. Now, child and pet guardians. So for children, obviously, who's the child? Who's the guardian? And then is there a second guardian if the first one's not able? alive and it's only for children under the age of 18. Now if you're parents then obviously it goes to the other person anyway. So this is only where for example both parents are dead. And they're just the same as we have children, we might have pets too who are to be looked after. Again, put the the name of the pet the, and the name of the guardian. Now if you own a property outright, not jointly, so if you own it outright and it's not jointly with your spouse, you can gift this to one or more beneficiaries um, directly. Again, we could do a gift. I mean, they can go into a testamentary trust. Or alternatively, what we can do there is we can um, simply um, let a spouse or a child um, reside in that for as long as they want to live in it. Um, so again, if you want to go down that track, then essentially you just need to um, build that process and say, this is what I want as the life tenant. So who's the, again, it's a trust. So who's the first appointor, name of the trustee, who's the beneficiary? Um, and then is if they sell the property, is another one to be picked up, so on and so forth. Now, if you've got superannuation, rather than doing a what we call a binding death benefit nomination, which you might have heard of, the best thing to do is an SMSF will. It only looks after your superannuation inside your self-managed super fund and can be used to pay income streams, lump sums. It can even go into, remember we talked about that, superannuation or that SMSF Death Benefits Trust here, which is a testamentary trust. So again, who's it going to be paid to? Is it going to be paid to the estate? Is it going to be paid to a child, an adult child? Or alternatively, is it going to be paid to a, um, a spouse? And what percentage? And then income lump sum. Now, in the event that the principal beneficiary is not alive, who's the next person to go to, so on and so forth? Much the same as we did with the ordinary estate. So there we have it. That's our guide to testamentary trust. Put in any other terms and conditions there. Now, what you want you to do, there is no right or wrong. The main thing is just to get down the information as best as possible, have a glass of red wine or a gin and tonic 
or kombucha or a nice cup of tea or coffee and just put down your thoughts there if you want to go through. If you don't want to use testamentary trust, that's fine. Just complete the ordinary will and we'll take it from there. From that, we'll then be able to start to work to build. We'll have a meeting after this and then we'll start build your um, creation of your wills and testamentary trusts and really make sure it hits all the goals and is there for your bloodline. Anyway, it's Grant Abbott signing off.